Welcome to my channel, Dr. Munshi Nasser Skeeter. How are you, my dear learners? In this video, I'm going to talk about what is meta-analysis. Nowadays, in a literature review, we often use meta-analysis. And in my opinion, meta-analysis is very difficult to understand. Sometimes it is difficult to apply. But in this video, I'm going to share a very simple way to apply the meta-analysis for your literature review. So without wasting any time, Let's get started. The mix are making another pass. Let's start the show. Now, my dear learners, you know, meta-analysis is one of the type of literature review. As I, as my previous video, I discussed about there are three types of literature review with the narrative, literature review with the systematic and meta-analysis. In my previous videos, you have seen all those videos about the literature review. In this particular case, we are talking about a literature review type, which is called the meta-analysis. Now, regarding meta-analysis, my dear learners, in the systematic literature review, we use the systematic way of inclusion and exclusion criteria. The meta-analysis is something like that as well. This is also something like a one type of systematic analysis. But instead of focusing more on theoretical gap, this meta-analysis type of literature review focus on more the empirical gap of the selected studies that you are going to do a literature review okay so now let's talk about with an example let's assume that i'm working on a literature review search for a renewable resource energy and energy security of a country okay so this is my topic and i'm going to talk about how energy security and renewable energy are helping the country's progress and development it can be an alternative source of energy security right so if i want to do a meta analysis what i have to do is first of all i need to check there are few articles which are more empirical and rather than theoretical basis you select them you train them you mold them so i will pick the selected empirical methodology or empirical analysis based papers for instance if i give you an example where it says that china pakistan economic corridor pakistan energy security a meta analysis review so if i come down at the stage about the inclusion and exclusion criteria you can easily see, see that the studies that included in the meta analysis have all passed the below points so you understand that there are inclusion and exclusion criteria in order to select your articles for meta analysis what type of inclusion and exclusion criteria for example research work must be published between 2014 and 2018 so there is a time limit for collecting your literature then the research work directly address the subject matter the matter that you are actually focusing for instance the objective of your research or research gap that you are looking for research work provides clear conclusion in regards to the both hypothesis and question explored in that particular research and one more thing i would like to recommend is that you need to find those papers where the dependent variable that you are selecting the same dependent variable are almost available on those selected articles so next time you see me will you remember me remember my dear learners independent variable may be vary but dependent variable for instance in this case if we select a dependent variable economic growth and the relationship between economic growth and renewable energy production in that case economic growth per capita might be a dependent variable and you might select the articles where dependent variable will be economic growth per capita understand that will be one of the criteria for inclusion of selected papers okay. you understand my concern okay so now you understand the first step of meta analysis is similar to the systematic analysis as well okay now what is meta analysis now meta analysis is more or less finding out okay you selected few articles where they have used descriptive statistics or correlation analysis or anova test or t test okay now you are going to apply the same technique in your research now those articles where you have selected the articles applied those methodologies and they have the similar type of dependent and independent variable similar type of sample size in that case 
you will find out what is the empirical gap available in the selected articles what are the empirical conclusions that they have made from their empirical analysis okay and in order to do that there are two three way you can do that one is called the effect size okay then another is called the selection bias okay so what is effect size effect size meaning that for instance if you are selecting articles where descriptive statistics okay are the base criteria for your comparison now you will find the mean median skewness and kurtosis values now if the mean values with the selected articles with the similar type of sample size and similar type of independent and dependent variables vary across the articles then mean will be one of the criteria to find out your effect size now there are two types of effect size one is called the random effect size and the other one is called the fixed effect size now what is random effect size and fixed effect size let let's talk about from my analysis where i said that the studies grouped at the top of the plot had a bigger sample sizes for instance if you can look at the article that i have selected you can see that meta analysis either it is fixed effect or random effect to calculate the summary estimate okay the fixed effect model known as the common effect model it known as a common effect model it assumes that all studies in the meta analysis have the same true effect size and that the only reason observed values differ is due to the sampling error so if you think that the results are almost similar but the standard error are different the standard error of the articles that you have selected with a similar type of sample size are different and due to that reason the results are coming different in that case you will apply the fixed effect size model now don't i mean now you understand don't amalgamate or don't mix up with the fixed effect random effect in the panel fixed effect and random effect panel fixed effect and random effect model are different than meta analysis fixed effect and random effect size model in meta analysis fixed effect meaning that common effect model where only the standard error are changing but more or less other values are almost the same in the case of sample size but if that is not the case if the sample size are varying if there are very big variations and there are a lot of other factors involving to determine the different type of results with the similar type of sample size in a similar type of dependent variable in that case we might apply the random effect model in practical experience i have seen that most of the cases we use the random effect size because it is hard to find and some articles were similar type of dependent variable and similar type of sample size so it is difficult for us to find out those articles and that's why we try to apply random effect size instead of fixed effect size okay so now effect size measurement is one of the meta analysis criteria or types there are other types of meta analysis like selection bias and i'll talk about selection bias later on now what is random effect model random effect model applies that there is a distribution of true effect sizes distribution of true effect sizes and that the estimates of renewable power capacity which means my dependent variable in this case collected from the primary research are a random sample from this distribution so which means the samples are different the standard errors are very variations are very very big in that case you of course apply the random effect size model okay so we have chosen a panel data analysis now in, in my case so we understand that why uh, we are saying fixed and effect and random effect and you remember as i told you that don't mix up with the panel random and fixed effect model with the meta fixed and random effect model now there are two types of visualization tool one one tool called the funnel or other another tool is called the forest plot so what is funnel plot the study is grouped at the top of the plot the funnel plot bigger sample sizes okay as a result smaller standard error so if there is a smaller standard error and the sample size are larger for all the studies that you have selected with a similar type of dependent and independent variable in that case you will apply the funnel upward symmetrically uh, plotting to understand the visualization of your studies 
results the empirical results it, you might be doing with the descriptive statistics results you might be picking correlation results you might be picking some regression results it doesn't matter which one you are picking but whatever you are picking try to pick a similar type of analysis from the, from the selected articles so that you can comparize or analyze it very well without having any difficulties okay so you can see here that the plot funnels are applying when the standard error of sample size are minimum okay now the next one is it looks like this you can see here that the standard error in the y axis and x axis this fx size and if it is in the middle of this line then you might understand that the fx size is not that is not that larger so it is more or less a fixed effect model or fixed effect size model in the meta analysis on the other hand this is a forest plot and i have selected 12 studies and you can see here that the variations are larger and that's why you can see here that sorry in a fixed effect model the variations are smaller my dear learners in that case you see that 27.30 21.56 these values are simply the mean value of my selected articles these values are simply the mean value from the descriptive statistics of my selected articles and as you can see here that these values are almost similar these so similar these values are almost similar okay and that's why my effect size are not that much it's a smaller effect size and that's the reason why i'm using the fixed effect model that's the re reason why i'm using the fixed effect model now we understand that why we are using the fixed effect and dynamic effect model and what is the purpose of funnel and the forest plot okay so this is one of the forest plot and the other one is the called the funnel uh, plot okay and both the plots are mainly doing for the effect size measurement and there are two different way you can measure with the two distinct plots okay so these are the important issues now the question is uh, doctor how can i apply this analysis what type of software that we might use okay one of the software is called the japs and this is a very interesting and free software completely free you go to the meta analysis you see meta analysis and if you click the meta analysis you see the classical model meta analysis okay bayesian model so use the jab software i will explain this tutorial in the next tutorial for jabs how to analyze the meta analysis using jabs so that is one of the best way free software meta analysis software there is no paid version for this you can easily find out this okay now the next one that i am going to talk about is the meta analysis essentials and this is one of the best thing that i have found and i will exp i will share those links in my video description box for your uh, purposes in this particular case the meta essentials gives you the complete picture of what type of analysis you can do using meta analysis for instance meta analysis data for example this excel file will give you the study name you can put the study name here your selected studies and then effect size you can choose your mean from the descriptive statistics or correlation values or skewness or kurtosis or standard deviation values here as the effect size and then you have a standard error which means your probability of sampling distribution and then number of observations okay you can see here the number of observations are very close and similar like 100 130 80 395 120 130 i told you that you have to select those articles that are similar type of sample size and similar type of dependent variable that will help you to make a meta-analysis easier and the conclusion or inference will be more effective and it will be create a contribution to the literature otherwise it may not be a good meta-analysis so as you can see here that this is the way you can calculate and this will give you the forest plot okay you can see that this is all done i mean you have you just have to put the values that you have collected into this excel file and the excel file will calculate and do the rest for you how wonderful it is right now then sub you look wonderful subgroup analysis moderator analysis and one last thing i would like to discuss about the publication bias publication bias is sometimes you know we have selected the articles those who those who are having the positive significant effect now we did not select other articles which did not support your hypothesis or might be a negative or insignificant statistical results in these cases we might have a selection bias 
meaning that we are collecting or selecting those articles, the articles having significant statistical results. But we are deleting the articles that are not significantly statistical results. We are not picking up those articles. So there is always a significant bias, selection bias in the meta-analysis and that bias you can calculate using the meta-analysis effect size. And this is how you can do that and this is always given you like standardized residual uh, diagram and many more things that you can use the publication bias okay normal qq plot about the publication bias and if you are interested to learn about the meta analysis there is a documentation how to interpret the results of meta analysis and user manual all these things i will give it to you for free in the video description box you can use it follow it and you know apply the random effect or fixed effect model or selection bias analysis or forest plot funnel plot to in order to do your systematic meta analysis for your literature review so with that note i'm going to finish this video here because although this video is too long already and i'm very happy that you come to this point i'm very very thankful hopefully in the next video i will explain a little bit about how to use meta analysis using japs software and how to interpret the meta-analysis results with the help of funnel, uh, funnel uh, plotting or forest plotting okay so all those things will be in the, my remaining part of the meta-analysis because it's a big part of the literature review but however you might use the meta-analysis right after this video watching this video with the documents that i am sharing with you so thank you so much for being with me and patiently hearing my whole video I'm grateful to all my subscribers and viewers to supporting me and looking for you to see the next tutorial and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much my dear learners. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.